Hello fellow cyborgs and welcome to a discussion video. I recently saw Harriet Rosie's making an action plan video. In it, she describes her plan to reduce the number of books on her physical TBR, which is one of her goals. I highly recommend her video. It's a lot of fun to see the plans that she has coming up for her channel and I will have it linked down below. As I watched her video, I was reminded of my journey to reducing my physical TBR and realized that I hadn't really made a video like this. So she inspired me to finally talk about my journey of reducing my physical TBR. So so originally three years ago when I decided I wanted to drastically reduce my physical TBR and in fact have a zero TBR, I had some expectations that didn't come true. My original plan was just to have the discipline to only read the books that I already owned. I had vague thoughts about reducing the amount of books that I added to my physical TBR, but nothing concrete. I never went on a book buying ban because I knew that just would not work for me. And the first few years as I worked on my physical TBR, I chipped away at it only just barely. And the ways that I ended up reducing my physical TBR were nothing like that first dream I had. One thing that I did not do at the beginning was really take a look at my shelves and wonder how I came to have this number of unread books. I did not critically look at my book acquisition habits. I think when I started reducing my physical TBR, it was at something like 170 books, but I did not look back at my many videos to find out. That's just a guess. I found that I was buying books almost needlessly. If I wanted to explore a new publisher because there was an addition of something that I really enjoyed, instead of buying one book, I bought three. If I was vaguely interested in a new topic, I bought again three books on that instead of just one or two. With every new readathon, it gave me an excuse to add more books to my physical TBR as opposed to choosing from my physical TBR. And I got caught in the hype of some books and the seventh person who referenced a book was, well, that's just the universe telling me I need to buy this book. So if you're thinking about reducing your physical TBR, I think looking at your habits and why you got to that physical TBR is a really important step. Another thing I didn't really think about when I was tackling my physical TBR is why are these books still on your shelves? I mean, it's one thing to know how the number of books piled on your shelves, but why are these specific books still unread? Some of them might be books that I was interested in a year and a half ago and I'm still kind of interested in, but not nearly as intensely as when I purchased them. Some of my books were intimidating for one reason or another. They were long, they were classics, they were translated, they were the start of a series, they were the second book of a series. And because of that, there was never the right time to read them. And with 170 books on your shelves, sometimes there's there's just not enough time to read all the things. But though those explanations made sense, I needed to get past them in order to reduce my physical TBR. I started to get control and traction on reducing my physical TBR after I curbed my book buying habits. I don't remember exactly how it happened. I think it was gradually over the course of those two years of attempting to reduce without actually doing so. Going book shopping with friends, buying one less book than normal or two less books than normal, taking a moment or an hour to think about why I want to purchase this book rather than just clicking purchase. I also started thinking about the books that I was buying and wondering, do I need to buy it? or can I get it from the library? Or do I need to buy it now? Am I going to read it now? Or am I going to just buy it so that I read it eventually? For me, buying a book so I can read it eventually didn't become a good enough reason to buy something. And to this day, that's one of the things that really helps me decide what I'm going to buy and what I'm just going to add to my Goodreads TBR. If I don't have any true intentions to read this thing within the next year, if I wanna buy it just so I don't forget to read it eventually, then that's not a good enough reason to buy it. And in fact, I've even created a don't forget shelf on Goodreads for this exact reason. Another thing I realized I had to do was stop asking for so many books for my birthday and Christmas. If I knew I was going to want to gift myself books throughout the year, then I really shouldn't be putting 30, 15, 10 books on my Christmas wish list because that means that 20, 25, 35, 40 books would be gifted to me into the year on top of the books that I was buying throughout the year. But the main ways that I found I reduced my physical TBR, again, was not that disciplined, just read the books you own. Harriet said one of her plans is to use audiobooks to her advantage. As much as it seems like it's wasting your money to buy the audiobook of a book that you have already purchased in physical form, for me, that worked wonderfully. 
wonders. Buying the audiobooks or getting them from the library is also helping me a lot with my rereads this year in hindsight is 2020. I think the idea of having wasted your money on a book really hangs us up from DNFing and unhauling books. I don't think that we should punish ourselves or limit ourselves for having wasted our money on a purchase in the past. We can't do anything about that past purchase unless you can somehow return that book or resell it and get money for it. And so it's just punishing yourself if you don't allow yourself the permission to unhaul it, to give up on it, or to buy it in another format so you can actually read it. So yes, I relied on audiobooks quite heavily to reduce my physical TBR. I can listen to at least three audiobooks a month easy, and that's three books from my physical TBR every month that I could get done. Some audiobooks are more engaging than the physical text, so if it was an intimidating book, either for length or seriousness of topic, audiobooks could really help me get through them. Another thing I did liberally was DNF. If I was reading a book, and that book was making me do anything but read it, it was time for me to let it go. Even if I had been lugging this book around for years and keeping it on my shelf, if it is not bringing me joy in its one sole function, which is for me to read it, then I shouldn't be wasting my time on that. I used to feel mass amounts of guilt for DNFing a book, and I think part of that comes back to the wasting my money idea. But these days, I've somehow been able to reclaim DNFing as a more liberating thing. Somehow, a lot of obligation gets built into the booktube community and to booktube creators about what we should and should not do with our reading. When, when it comes down to it, the reason why I booktube and the reason why I read is because it's fun. And if I'm no longer having fun, if instead I'm just feeling guilty about things, then what are my priorities? So these days, DNFing is more of a positive decision for me. It is me choosing to enjoy my reading rather than slog through something for some reason. And then perhaps the most extreme form of DNFing is just unhauling a book without reading it. I did this so much. I unhauled books at almost like depressing rates when I was reducing my physical TBR, but there are no books that I have unhauled without reading them that I regret unhauling. Again, I might regret having wasted my money, but since I cannot control time travel and cannot go back in time and stop myself from buying that book originally, then sometimes the most freeing experience available to me was just never reading that book and giving it away. Most of the books that I unhauled were books that were purchased for what I would now describe as the wrong reasons. But at the time, I purchased them and there's nothing I can do to change that. But I can remove them from my physical space. I can remove that physical embodiment of guilt and bad decision making and just let it go and move on. I haven't looked at the actual numbers. Again, I was too lazy to look back at my old videos, but I would not be surprised if I unhauled 60% of my physical TBR over the years. My goal is to do that much, much, much less moving forward, but that was one of the prices I had to pay during my transition of changing my habits. Getting audiobooks of her physical TBR books, DNFing, and unhauling were Harriet Rosie's three main action plans to get her physical TBR under control, and those were the ones that worked for me too. I really hope that it works well for her and she gets to feel success at having a lower physical TBR. I did have a couple more thoughts though that I thought could help the transition of when you're actually reading those physical TBR books rather than just transferring them to an audio format or just not finishing them. I really enjoyed giving myself mini challenges or using readathons as a way to reduce my physical TBR. Most readathons these days, I find, are becoming less restrictive on the challenges, so that means that you can participate in a readathon without having to buy really specific books. So use these readathons, use these group reading experiences as motivation to finally get some books off of your physical TBR read. And if there's no readathon around for you to participate in, you can make mini challenges for yourself. Maybe do a fiction-nonfiction pairing. Maybe do some sort of rainbow challenge. Maybe read all of the books about mermaids that are on your shelves and create a video series called Mer Week. Theming my reading and kind of in essence gamifying my reading did help me find motivation to get to my physical TBR books. Another thing that you might want to consider if you're going to reduce your physical TBR is how you're going to handle hauling books while you're trying to reduce it. Are you going to set up a sort of check and balance system where after X number of books read, you get to buy X number of books? Do you think that's something that's really going to work for you or do you normally buy books spontaneously or when the occasion arises? You might also want to consider how often you add to your physical 
TBR, under what circumstances, what time of year, when your birthday's coming up, when another holiday is coming up. Another sneaky thing that happened to me was I wasn't buying new books, but I was getting books I didn't own from the library. And because I wasn't hauling those books, I wasn't adding to my physical TBR, I didn't feel as bad. But the end result was still the physical TBR number not being reduced. I'm obviously not here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you about the things that I did not consider when I started my zero by TBR journey and what I think are important questions or at least just important moments of self-awareness for you to have in order to be more successful at this. So those were some of my tips and also just the reality of me reducing my physical TBR. Currently, I have 12 books on my physical TBR and I don't think I actually wanna get that number to zero anymore. I had originally talked talked about wanting to have a zero TBR or less than 10 books on my physical TBR or less than 20 books on my physical TBR. And these days, I think it's more that I want them to fit on a certain very small shelf of my bookshelf. They can fit as creatively as they want. And I think I would like to keep the number less than 30 books. But during the pandemic, I realized that having a large physical TBR might be an asset during this strange time where access to books might be more limited for you. And I did have some moments of panic thinking about the fact that I would not have access to new books because I did not have a collection of them myself. Fortunately, I have been doing a year of rereading and so the rest of my already read books on my bookshelf were completely open and available and there are lots of those. But it did definitely make me rethink my desire to have a zero TBR or a single digit TBR. So that's been an interesting little side journey. But overall, I am really pleased at how my journey has evolved. I really enjoy having a fresh physical TBR rather than a small physical TBR. I really like that through the TBR Clear Out Readathon hosted by Katie from Books and Things, I was able to get some of the most intimidating and stale books from my physical TBR read. I feel a lot lighter and a lot more excited for all of the books on my physical TBR. And when I buy new books, even if it's five of them, I don't feel as guilty as I did when I had 60 books and I bought five more. I didn't enjoy this journey to get to this small TBR. It was definitely a lot of disappointments along the way, but I really enjoy the state of things now and I'm really glad that I did go on this journey. So good luck to you, Harriet, and good luck to anyone else who wants to reduce their physical TBR. I hope this was a little bit helpful and if you have any tips or any struggles that you're going through, please leave them in the comments down below. Hopefully some other commenters can give their two cents as well as mine. So anyway, thank, thank, thank you for watching and until next time, Read your own books and continue to be lovely.